before we get to the rotary hoe action, I need to do three things real quick. Good boy. Come on, honey. Now we'll go around it. Go around it. Good job, honey. Good girl. Yeah. All right, on to the fun stuff. Let's go get that rotary hooked up. Now we got her all hooked up. I'm gonna stop up here in a, in a spot in the field where the grass isn't as tall so you can kind of see the purpose of this. All right, hopefully the footage from that Insta360 showed what I was talking about, but this is what it's doing. It's just poking a bunch of holes in the soil. Now, if it was in an open field, meaning like there's nothing planted yet, or even the, if there was something planted like corn or another row crop, it, the ground would be loose enough that it would not just poke holes, it would actually bring more up. But since we have established vegetation here, these grasses, it makes it to where the ground isn't hard, but it does make it to where the soil is together better and is not just gonna till it up and you know kind of ruin it. So like I said, this is just gonna poke a bunch of holes and do some aeration for us. And you can see, it doesn't really throw, you know, I mean, so right here, prime example. It throws a little bit of dirt up, but there's really nothing that's getting thrown up from it. Most of it is actually kind of just poking that hole and allowing some air and even nutrients to be able to get down in there. So we're gonna get back to it and uh, we'll get some drone video here shortly. The next question is probably gonna be something like, hey, you know, how do you know it's even doing anything when you can't see through the vegetation? And that's a very good question to ask, actually. So over there, where I showed you when it was barren, or, you know, the grass wasn't very tall and stuff like that, it goes a lot deeper into the ground there. It actually goes about two inches in the ground, whereas right here where I'm standing, uh, it's probably gonna be about an inch, maybe even a little less, here, let's dig around here real quick, see what we can find. Um, so, peel our grasses back. Oh, there's one right there. All right. Uh, I don't know how much I can get this away from you, but, or away from the. So right here, I'll mark it with my finger. So that's about how deep it is. So yeah, just a, just a hair over an inch. And I mean, this grass is, it's thick. It's, uh, it's very well established. And obviously that's going to make it difficult for that ground to get penetrated. And then the other thing is, is that this ground gets compacted every year. And not on purpose, but when we cut hay for the most part. And now that we have auto steer, our tracks are gonna be almost the same unless we change the angle or do something to ensure that we're not going on the same one. And that's what we're gonna do. On this side of the field though, so you can see this pond right here behind me, and there's a stream that runs right up here all the way to the road. That stream, while crossable by a tractor, it is kind of difficult to do it with an implement on because the angles and everything else. So it's, I'm not gonna say it's impassable, but we don't wanna take implements across it. So that's what makes it to where on this section right here, this, the, North-South is kind of the only way we can have a track and not turn around every, you know, 100 feet or whatever it may be. So I get the hypocrisy when we say that, hey, we're using this to kind of aerate and decompact the soil. But here in South Central Missouri, I don't have much of another choice. What I would really love to do is have a disc, like a, a VT, that the um, discs are actually straight. So zero degree angle, just straight with the, with the, you know, the direction that the tractor is going to travel. I think that would be amazing. And what would be really cool about it is the fact that 
it would easily make it to where I can make slits in the ground and do the same same concept I'm doing here probably more effectively but VTs are pretty expensive and even a used one is really quite expensive so that's why we're doing this way we did it last year we did notice now I will also say that last year's gain on our hay production was it just from the rotary hoe no but was it just from manure no because we'd put manure on the year before and it did well um, doubled our hay yield but it also went from you know something that was never not never fertilized but hadn't been fertilized in a long time by the previous owner and we wanted to fertilize it because we rely on that to feed our animals all year so the other benefit for us is that I'm sure you can see it around here in random spots when we spread manure sometimes a random clump might come out this also helps to break that up and it makes it to where it's not just going to kill that little section of grass wherever it's covered completely and no sunlight can get to it so there's a there's a lot of benefits for our end what's your guys's favorite snacks on the tractor i really like these beef sticks they've got jalapenos and uh cheese in them they're actually from the cow we had slaughtered this year or well last year highly recommended show you guys so it's been two weeks since we've rotary hoed this entire hay field and obviously the weather has changed it's substantially warmer now it's about well actually for the last several days it's been really close to 80 degrees and we've gotten about two inches of rain in the la over the last five days but majority of it fell yesterday now right down here you can see that yeah there's a couple of holes that are still here um, most of them have kind of filled back in with you know whatever's washed into them after the rain so like here and here 
here, here. So they're, they go away after a while. So that's why we do it again, because that ground, all that does is just puncture the ground. It lets it to where air can come in. It lets it to where nutrients can come in there. And overall, it breaks up the compaction in the soil. So I'm happy with what the hayfield's looking like. We're off to a great start. We've still got about a month, probably a month and a half before we're even gonna cut hay. And this has come up a lot. So this is obviously a high traffic area for our field because this is the entry. So even if I come in here to go spread manure on that end, I still have to drive through right here. But it, uh, it makes a big difference for us. And like I said, the other side earlier in the video, or when I recorded that video was talking about how much thinner that had been, it is a night and day difference from what it used to be compared to when before we started rotary hoeing it to now. So I hope this video helps you guys kind of understand the science behind it and the reasoning behind what we've done. And obviously different soil types are going to respond a little differently. So maybe it will work great for you. Maybe it won't be much of a difference. It's kind of hard to say. I guess it just depends on how hard or how compacted your ground is and how much that helps break it up. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. And I hope you found it helpful and actually knowledge that will help you with your farm. So have a blessed week. We'll see you next time.